Folks who have Alzheimer's disease are typically treated with two different types of drugs. One uh, is called Namenda, and it works on a, a receptor molecule in the brain. And the other is uh, an inhibitor of a neurotransmitter breakdown. This took a long time to develop. So, for example, in the 70s, it was discovered that people with Alzheimer's disease have a depletion of a very important neurotransmitter associated with memory called acetylcholine. So uh, pharmaceutical companies discovered a way to slow down that breakdown, and it took 15 years before that ever made it to the drugstore. And sadly, neither of these approaches work very well. They're palliative, they're not disease-modifying. What we want is disease-modifying therapeutics. Our lab uh, has been sort of a pioneer in the area of identifying A-beta oligomers, which we also called addles, uh, as a toxin, as the toxin, that causes memory failure early on in the disease. And we think this is the mechanism of dementia in Alzheimer's, uh, can be triggered by A-beta oligomers, which we uh, and our colleagues have uh, been working on for now more than 10 years. Uh, these probably are going to be really good targets for therapeutics. My goal in the lab is to try to identify molecules that block the binding of A-beta oligomers to neurons, so to prevent their toxic effects on neurons and Alzheimer's disease. My work in this lab is to characterize the toxin, the oligomeric toxin, that we believe is um, the cause of many of the pathological effects you see in Alzheimer's disease. We're looking at the effects of the neurotrophin on the synapse uh, disconnection. So synapse being the connection between neurons that are essential to form memories. Uh, this disease is actually uh, producing neurotoxin that robs uh, the memory formation. And um, the interesting part of it is to try to understand the dynamic of the protein that are located at the synapse and how the synapse are actually uh, dying after the accumulation of this neurotoxin. My current project is to develop a MRI probe that we can use for early diagnosis and hopefully actually therapeutics of Alzheimer's disease. Why I'm so passionate about this work is it didn't start out as passion per se. I was interested in the uh, scientific aspects of it. But when I talked to people, my family, who are uh, interested in what I do, and I told them I'd work on Alzheimer's disease and working on finding drugs, seeing the response uh, in them that they were so excited about the prospect of these maybe new treatments was, was sort of a, became a driver for my excitement. I've always been interested in research and this is something that can affect a lot of people. I, I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this work. The other aspect of uh, this research, why am I so passionate about is because I think uh, with the new generation and with the new technology that we have developed to treat cancer and other disease, uh, people are going to be living longer. But as uh, Rita Montaccini just said be recently, and she just died, uh, it is important to actually add life to your days, but not days to your life. And that is uh, meaning that you want to have people that are aging well, right, and that are not robbed by Alzheimer's disease. I'm passionate because I want to see Alzheimer's disease made a memory. There is a huge amount of collaboration, and that's the only way progress can be made. My lab probably uh, collaborates with 15 other laboratories around the world, Japan and Brazil and France. Uh, these collaborations allow people who are expert in one technology to interact with those who are expert in a complementary but different technology. One of the big breakthroughs, I think, uh, that is closest to the clinic is the development of vaccines for Alzheimer's disease. They haven't really worked so far, but they've been off target. You know, can you imagine getting a shot for Alzheimer's disease, just like you get a shot for the flu? Mm -hmm. um, 
That's our goal. And in fact, uh, the work from mouse models that have Alzheimer's disease um, indicates that you could even reverse the disease uh, at its early stages. You can give them a shot that neutralizes the toxins, and that's one of the approaches my lab is taking. Uh, that neutralizes the toxins, and they recover their ability for learning and memory. It's very exciting. So uh, we made our first publication in the discovery of toxins, uh, these oligomers, in 1998. So 15 years ago, we've been working on this project. You have to uh, introduce the idea, convince other people that it makes sense, demonstrate how it's connected to real pathology in the brain, and then start to figure out, what can we do about it? There's a vaccine. Can we treat with insulin? Is there a way of preventing these toxins from forming in the first place? All of these are strategies that have to be tried and tested because mostly drugs that are new don't work. One great organization has been the Alzheimer's Association, and they're headquartered here in Chicago. They've been a, a magnificent institution for alerting people to the problem of Alzheimer's disease. 25 years ago, nobody could be even uh, pronounce the disease. I mean, nobody knew about it. This organization has made it um, uh, a priority, and they receive funds to uh, fund laboratory research. My lab is funded in part by the Alzheimer's Association. But funding right now is very bad. If you have 100 applications that go to the federal government for Alzheimer's disease, more than 90 of those will get no money. And they're all good. It seems like we're that close. But what I see happening is big pharmaceutical companies pulling back because it's a difficult problem and it's filled with lots of risks. So treating the brain is not a, an easy thing to do. So my lab, for example, uh, has collaborated with a major pharmaceutical company, um, made tremendous progress developing the vaccine, uh, and then they decided we really can't go any further. And so now we have to rely on contributions to, to make us go forward. And I, I think it's a very exciting, uh, promising new approach, um, but the, the money has to come from somewhere. If you think about the fact that the impact on our economy is $200 billion a year, and we probably spend $200 million, $400 million to come up with a cure, that, that, that's a pretty bad ratio. I think we'd be surprised how interested the young folks are. I mean, in my laboratory, we have high school students working, undergraduates working. They, they are very excited about understanding Alzheimer's disease um, and, and fixing it. And, and they know their parents are going to get Alzheimer's disease. And they know if we don't do anything, they're going to have to pay the bill in 2050 at a time when the economy is going to be very hard pressed uh, to take care of their parents. I think people have to be optimistic like we are here in my lab. Uh, we've been working on it for 20 years and we just get more optimistic because all of the fundamentals are taken care of now and now we get to the stage where we can do something about it and I, I think people should feel optimistic. <laughs>